Hi, I'm Jeff Kleiman, and we are at the Martini Distillery uh, in the northern part of Italy, just outside of Torino. And uh, we're going to take a look at how uh, vermouth is made. Behind this door, we have the distillation room. Secrets. I know that someone today asked in Pancalieri, we want to know more. How do you transform the herbs in elixirs and distillates? Behind this door, you have the answer. So please follow me. We take the dry, <clears throat> the dry mix of botanicals. We load them into the pot stills, copper pot stills. We add pure alcohol and water when required. And through the process of distillation, okay, with the high temperature, we extract all the flavors from the botanicals. And the final result is a perfectly transparent distillate that contains inside all the smell and part of the taste of the herbs. And we use this distillate to aromatize our martinis. So this typically is a blend of several compounds, cloves, coriander, something other inside. No, we are speaking only about one of the ingredients of martini, but each ingredient, wine, uh, sugar, caramel when required, alcohol, is checked from the beginning to the end. And you know exactly in each bottle of martini what, what, what is the lot the provenance of each of the ingredients. So, welcome in the blending room. In this big tank that is uh, behind you, we go to marry, to marry the different ingredients, to blend the different ingredients. When we have pumped inside the wine, we pump the sugar, we have the sugar is solid saccharose, obviously. We have to solve the sugar into the wine, so to make a syrup. To prepare one batch of Martini Bianco, in one tank, we have to solve 32 tons of sugar. When we have the sugar and, and uh, solve it into the wine, is the moment to add the extract. The extract, especially, and the distillates, they have to be added in a precise order. They have different amount of strength, they have different composition. If you add one, two, three, it's right. If you add three, two, one, something happens differently. What happened? That uh, the alcohol level into the, the tank is different and some natural components can precipitate after the extract and all the distillates. Uh, if we have to produce Martini Rosso, we need caramel. So there is the right amount of caramel that is added to complete the, the recipe. And obviously, when required, we check the alcohol and we add an amount of pure alcohol to achieve the right ABV, okay, when required, and then we complete the batch. So, welcome to Manhattan. <laughs> oh my God. This is the nickname of this department. We have a lot of stainless steel tanks. The capacity in this department is 5.6 million liters of martini. If you taste the martini at this stage, and you are not a worker here or an expert, an analogist, you think, what is this? It's not my martini. Why? Because it's a martini in elaboration. These are solid sears, chlorophylls that precipitate. We have to wait that they go on the bottom in order to support them. And during this week, or sometimes 10 days, depending repeat on the formulas, this process makes really the martini. It's not only blending, it's a real harmonization and something changes in the product. Don't forget, martini is made with the main ingredient is the wine. Wine contains a lot of mineral salts. We chill the product, we refrigerate it, just a temperature that is just above the freezing point. At this low temperature, we accelerate the precipitation of the mineral salts, okay? And after, then we, they create microcrystals. We wait for three days, microcrystal growth. They become heavy, goes in the bottom of the tank. We filter it at low temperature with a cold filtration in order to remove the mineral salts that now they are solid and we can separate them through a filtration. Only after this filtration, Martini is finally ready for the bottle lines. Unless we scale here, we achieved an important result. 150 million bottles together with Martini and sparkly wine produced and shipped from this plant. <laughs>
And that's Martini. It's a, it's really interesting in that it lives between wine and spirit with, you know, the alcohol added in and then the distillate of the different uh, herbs and botanicals. Uh, kind of a little cousin to gin, maybe a brother to wine, somewhere in between. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like it and subscribe to our channel. I'm Jeff Kleinman with Drink Spirits. Thanks.